Welcome back guys, it's Israel. Are you guys struggling to containerize your .NET API with a Postgres DB as well as PG Admin 4? Well then this is the video for you. I'm gonna show you guys what the Docker Compose is gonna look like as well as take you guys step by step through everything that I'm doing and then with the final product, how you can test it so that you can verify that everything I'm telling you guys is working. But now let's jump into the video. But I quickly wanna give a shout out to all my channel members and if you guys wanna see your name here as well as have access to all the code from all the videos on my channel, click the link in the description or the join button on my profile then send an email to this email with the code that you wanna access to. But now let's get into the video. All right, guys, so we are now at the .NET 8 API that we're going to be using for this video. So it's going to be a very simple API with just one endpoint, as you guys can see right here. And then this is going to be communicating with the Postgres DB. And I can show you guys right here. So we have it declared right here. And the only other tool that we're going to be using is pgadmin4. And this is to just show you the database that we have locally, right? So we just have this app DB. And we have one table called Pokemon. And then we're only going to have one line of data. That's all that we have. So... Again, our endpoints is just this one get Pokemon endpoint. We are gonna have a DB context with just one table and the Pokemon model, just like I just showed you in the database. So I'm gonna run it really quick just so you guys can see that it is working and then we can move on to the Docker stuff. So as we can see here, we just have this one endpoint. If I try it out, we can execute and we're gonna get that one line of code, this one right here. So it's Metagross right here. And we can go to PG Admin 4 and we can see that that is the one line that we have here. So. Now, with that being said, you guys are here for the Docker Compose and setting all of that up inside of this project. So let's add in Docker. So go to your project right here, right click it. We're going to do add container orchestrator support. We see Docker Compose. OK, then we're going to target Linux. OK, and now we can see that it's going to add in a bunch of different things. We can see that we have this Docker Compose here as well as our Docker file. And let me explain what everything in here means. So this Docker file right here are essentially the instructions to creating the Docker image for our API. So this Docker file essentially is going to go inside of the Docker Compose because that's just going to be for the container for the API. So what is going on in here? So this is the base .NET 8 image. It gets referenced down here at the end, as well as once we build and publish, we have the entry point of our DLL. And then this is going to be exposed on these given ports. We are actually going to change these to 5,000 and 5,001. And what does the 5,000 and 5,001 ports mean? They are essentially the default ports for Kestrel, which is the web server built into .NET. And you can also use ports 5,001 to 5,004 for other API instances or services. So that's everything that's going on in here. Now let's move on to everything in the Docker Compose because that's what you guys are here for. So under here, we see that we have the Docker Compose file. This is the Docker Compose, but what is it? It's essentially a YAML file that defines how to configure and run multi-container applications in Docker. So as we can see, this is our API right here with the Docker image that we're going to build from our Docker file. But in here, we also have to add our Postgres DB as well as PG admin. So we're basically going to have three different containers in here that you guys will see in a sec. And that then gets built and ran and that spins up our application. And our application has three different containers inside of it, but you don't really notice because the Docker Compose is orchestrating everything so that it just looks like one app, but it's actually three different containers. And since we changed the ports in the Docker file, we also want to go into the Docker Compose override YAML file and change our ports in here. So we want to do this and we want to change these to this. So uh, for HTTP 5000, HTTPS 5001, and then we also want to map them correctly here. Cool. So now the next thing that I want to go do is now let's start filling out the Docker Compose with everything that we're going to need for our three different containers in our Docker Compose file. So we already got kind of a head start because of the way that we added Docker to our API, but now we need to add in a few extra little things. So we're going to add in those ports that we just edited. So we're going to align this correctly so it doesn't bother anybody. So we're adding in our ports, the ports 5000 and 5001. Next, let's add in the Postgres DB. So this is what that is gonna look like. I'm just gonna copy it right in. So as you can see here, we are calling our container uh, Postgres DB right here with the container name. We are setting the image specifically to 16.1, but you can also do latest here. And if you want a specific version or something like that, go to the official Docker Hub image for Postgres, and then that'll give you all the information about versions or whatever you need to learn about running Postgres in Docker. That's 
where you should go. Next in here, we're gonna say restart always. Here, we're gonna de declare the default ports for Postgres. So right here, five, four, three, two. And then we're setting the environment variables right here. The Postgres DB name is gonna be app DB, just like it is in our local right here. And then we're gonna set our test user and then our very, very strong password. And then we have a volume here. So what is the volume? The volume is essentially where locally, our data for our Postgres DB is stored because what if your container goes down? Well, you would lose your data and we don't want that. So that is all stored in the volume as well as credentials in that information is also stored in the volume. And why do I make that a little emphasis at the end? It's because let's say you initially run this Docker Compose, it builds your initial database with these credentials. And then you're like, hmm, I don't know if I want it to be called test user, right? Maybe I want it to be super user or something different or test user too. And then you rerun your Docker Compose thinking it's gonna recreate everything again with the new credentials. And you're like, hmm, let me try and sign in. It's gonna give you an error with your auth, with your credentials. And you're gonna be very confused as I was at one point. And really what's going on there is this volume is only created the very first time you run your Docker Compose. So some possible solutions. So you could run this command, docker volume ls, that will list out all the volumes that you have. And then what you could do is do docker volume rm and then the volume name that you wanna delete. When you delete this, the next time you run your Docker Compose, it will recompile everything and restart everything so your credentials will be good. So that is one way that you can fix that error with your credentials and just be aware that again, the first time you run your Docker Compose, it's gonna spin all of this up and then it's not gonna change unless you go in and change your volume or delete it. So just be aware of that so that you guys aren't confused if you run into that issue after compiling your Docker Compose for the first time. And now that we're done with the Postgres DB, let's move on to PG admin. So now we've added PG admin right here. So again, we have our container name, PG admin for container. We are again saying the image and you can also find this image in the Docker hub as well. It's very official. We again are saying restart. We are mapping the ports, uh, the default port of 80 to 8081. And then we are again setting our credentials here because we have to sign in to PG admin so that then we can sign in to Postgres. And we'll see that in a second. And then again, we are defining the volume for PG admin. And then at the very bottom, we just have to set our volumes for this and declare them so that we have all this. And this is everything that you need in your Docker Compose file for this all to work. And the last thing that we're going to need to do and change in our API is we need to go into our program.cs and we need to add in our new connection string. So I'm gonna change this to the Docker container connection. And I'm gonna go into my app settings and grab the new connection string and put it into our project. So app settings, and we're gonna add this one right here. And it's gonna look like this. So this is how you're gonna connect to your Postgres DB when you're running it in a container. So your host is gonna be the Postgres DB. So that is gonna be the name of the container. So it is gonna be this right here. That's what you want as your host. Port's gonna be the same, database is the same, and then make sure that your credentials are the credentials that you are declaring right here, right? And do the same thing with the volume, make sure that you're not changing things and being confused, make sure that you write them down and just keep note of what the actual credentials are. But with that being said, that is everything that we need. And now let's go ahead and test. So before we actually test anything, you guys need to make sure that you have Docker desktop on your computer. It's gonna allow you to have Docker as well as view your images and your containers all right here. And it's gonna be very nice to manage as well as just gonna be easier to use. So to download that, you're gonna go to docker.com products, Docker desktop, and go ahead and download that. And once you have that, we can continue with the video. But just before we test that the containers are working, if you guys have found this video helpful, please drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the other wonderful content that I have for you guys. But now, let's get to seeing if this container works. Okay, so now to actually test this API, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this command, docker-compose up dash dash build dash d. So dash dash build, what it's gonna do is it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna rerun your Docker file in case there was any changes to your project. And then it's gonna run the Docker compose file. So it's gonna run this. So let's go ahead and use that command. So let's go ahead and right click our project. We're gonna go down to open in terminal. And now we're gonna run the Docker compose up dash dash build dash d and let's see what happens so our command finished running let's see what happened so right here once we ran the docker compose 
it went ahead and it pulled our Postgres DB image from Docker. And then as well, it pulled in our uh, PG admin image. So once it pulled those in, then right here is where it shows that the Docker file was running. And then you can see that it created the network default, created our two volumes, and then it created all three of our containers. So now let's go see them in Docker desktop. So as we can see here, we're now in our Docker desktop and we can see that we have our Docker Compose API here and we can see underneath that we have these three containers running. If we go to images, we can see that we have the three images. So our Docker Compose API image, which is from our Docker file, and then the PG admin four, which we pulled as well as Postgres also got pulled. So we have those three images and now we go to containers and we see that we have these here. We see all the ports they're running on. So we see that 808180, which was the one right here. And we can see that we have 5432, which is this one right here. And then we have the 5000s for HTTP and HTTPS. So with that being said, what can we do here? Well, we can see that we have this. If you had errors for some reason, you could click here. You could see your logs. There is one error that I've seen here, and it was something about a dev certificate or something popping up, right? Where it was just kind of weird that it would pop up. And what I usually do there is I just kill kill the container and then I just click here and I run it from the API and that seems to just reset Docker in a way with the project. It's just a really weird error that I want to bring up to you guys and the way that I've kind of gone around it is just if it runs and this is yellow and it's not running and you see like a some type of dev certificate error which is super weird, kill this by just clicking here and delete it and then what you can do is just click here and run it from here and it seems to just kind of get Docker that's like hey yeah, we want to actually run this API. It's cool. But now with that being said, uh, what you can do is you can just go here and you can click this. It's going to bring it up on a different tab. And now let the, let's test that this works. So what you can do is do this. And right here, now we can see that we're on localhost 5001, which is obviously where this is running. So we can see that that is correct. Now, obviously, if you click on Postgres DB, this is going to bring up anything right? Because it's a DB that we can't see. But for that is why we have PG admin four, so we can actually edit it. So in here, it's going to bring up this. So how do we log in? Well, go back to your Docker compose and you'll remember that you have this right here. So we're going to have this. So let's go back to here. And now that we're back here, we have to use these credentials. So our super secret test one, two, three percent log in. So PG admin here actually can connect directly to our Postgres database and all of these can talk to each other. So if I run this right here, you see that we're going to get an error and that's that Pokemon doesn't exist. Why? Because we haven't created that table. So a way around this is you can have automatic migrations when you run your container and that could automatically populate your database when you run your Docker compose file. So that is one way around it. Or you have PG admin, so you can go in here and you can add that in. But now we need to connect to our Postgres database and this is how you do it. Once you open this window up, you can just name it whatever you want. You can name it Postgres DB here, and then you're going to go to connection. So, so host name slash address is going to be the name of your container. So go back to your project and then it is going to be this right here. So Postgres DB. So go back here and right here, it's going to be Postgres DB. Your port's going to be the same. Your maintenance database, this is going to be app DB. It's going to be the name of the database that you created in your Docker Compose. If not, like if you didn't put anything there, then it would be called Postgres. Then your username is going to be the username that you put in the Docker Compose as well. So going back here, we can see that we have test user. So test user. And then we have our strong password as our strong password. So right here, let's go back here and we have strong password. So now let's save and sign in. As you can see, we've now connected to the database that we're running in our container. And now we go in here, we can see that we have our AppDB already created, but if we go down to tables, we're gonna see that we have nothing. So let's go ahead and create this table. So we're gonna call it Pokemon. We're gonna add our columns. So we're gonna add the ID and let's set this all up correctly. It's Let's set it as integer, primary key, and let's go in here and edit, and then let's set it as an identity. Now let's add in our next one, which is gonna be name, and then this is just gonna be straight text. And then we're gonna have one more column, which is type, and is also just going to be text.
And with that being said, we can now save this table. It's going to create it. And then we do this and we bring up all the rows. Obviously, we have no data here, so let's add a row. So let's add a Pokemon. Gross. And then just to differentiate, I'm only going to put steel just so you guys don't think that I'm using like my local DB. So we have steel here versus on our local steel slash psychic. So it's going to be a little different. Just so if you guys don't believe me what I'm actually connected to, you guys can believe me now. So with that being created, we now have our table and we now have actual data in here. We need to just save this so that we actually have this row in here. And with all that being said, we should be able to run this and actually connect to this one that is from our Docker Compose and it's from our containers running. So let's go back here and we're going to execute. And as you can see, we now get this one, which is just steel and it is not steel so that's psychic. So it is the Postgres DB that we are talking to in our container. But that's it, guys. That's everything that you guys have to do to get your Docker Compose file working with your .NET 8 API, a Postgres DB, and PG Admin. It's as easy as that to get going. And with that being said, if you guys want to learn more about Docker, click on these videos right here.